everyone, MCZX here of the Smart Kingdom, and I wanted to do a quick little vid on this week's Raw and SmackDown. I guess we're going to call this Brand Warfare Light, because I'm not going to go all in depth, and it'll be like a 20 minute thing like you're used to. I have been thinking about the channel for a while, and I'm trying to figure out how I can expand it and change a couple things. Um, nothing's wrong with Brand Warfare. I don't think it's like a bad formula or anything, but... I'm starting to see a little trend in my videos where I should, you know, have everything fresh on the brain. And sometimes it feels like it's not fresh on the brain. It feels like I'm just like, eh, sluggish, blah, blah, blah. I feel like I should record right after the show goes off and give you my thoughts then instead of just, you know, doing it maybe on a Wednesday and having it out on a Thursday. I don't think that's, that's good because people will be over it by then, you know? But... I don't know if that's over with. I don't think I'm going to end Brand Warfare. Um, I like it. It's not a bad series, but at the same time, uh, it, it's just, I don't, I don't really know if it should be like that. Maybe it should be Raw has its own separate video, little review and thoughts. SmackDown has its own separate thing. Instead of it being like them against each other, I should just review it and work on other things at the same time instead of doing... Oh, let's just do brand warfare and call it that. I I gotta make a decision on what to do there because I don't have a lot of input. Besides, you know, I don't have a lot of input from other people. I'm the one running all of this, so I just have to figure out what I'm gonna do with that. But I wasn't gonna leave you dry this week. I wasn't gonna leave you dry this week because I do have some thoughts on this week's Raw and SmackDown. So we're gonna call this brand warfare light. Very very short video. It's not gonna be super long. Don't have a lot of time to waste anyway. <laughs> I have to be up for work. So I'm not going to take 20 minutes. Maybe we'll take maybe 10 at the tops. Maybe 10 or 9 minutes. Who knows? But I don't know what we're going to do with the channel. Maybe some input from you guys would help. I, I would like that. I would like that. My 18 subscribers. Shout outs to y'all. Thank you. Thank you. But let's just talk about what happened on Raw. So the big moment. You, you know the one. Everyone's been buzzing about it. Everybody's been buzzing about it. Roman Reigns has been buried. I mean, he's like six feet deep. He's, down, he's way below there. He's under my tile. He is under my house. He's probably in the center of the earth. He is gone, y'all. Like, Roman Reigns got owned by John Cena in one of the best promo battles of all time because it was so one-sided and that's why it was the best and I have a slight dislike for Roman Reigns because he has been shoved down my throat and he is exactly what John Cena called him, a corporate carbon copy of John Cena, something that he can never be. And I just found it humorous that Roman looked like he either forgot his lines or he paused on purpose and John just called him out on it and... Kind of just ripped one into him, and they said it was a shoot. So if it was a shoot, perfect, perfect. John needs to shoot on him because Roman needs to get, he needs to bring the best out of Roman. John needs to bring the best out of Roman. Roman right now can't cut a promo to save his life. It took him five years after all. But Roman needs help, and I think this feud with John is perfect. Either this is going to turn him heel, or it's going to make Roman up his game, you know, because can't just slack off with John Cena. He's going to call you out on it. But... That was a wonderful segment. I loved that. I loved that. I found it funny that Roman's only response was, Oh, you're, you're a fake B. Yeah, fake ass B. I'm like, oh, okay. That, that's it, but you still can't cut a promo and you can't do your job right. And I'm a part-timer who does your job better than you. So what's your point, bro? Like, what you trying to say, dog? So <laughs> it, it was perfect. It was perfect. I loved that. That was Raw's biggest moment of the entire show. It felt like the rest of the show was over because everyone was talking about the Roman and Cena thing. I don't even remember there would be in a match between Roman and the club, but that did happen. It didn't matter. Roman and Cena was the best part. Sorry if you hear my dog in the background. But, but, besides that, Jeff Hardy's the new number one contender for the IC title. That's cool. You also have, I don't know, let's see, is anything else worthy happening on the show? The Bar and Seth and Dean had single matches against one another. That was cool. Decent match. And you also had Sasha Banks proving once again that she is an absolute failure at being a champion. I don't understand why she won it at SummerSlam if she was just going to lose it on Raw the next night. That didn't make any sense to me. But 
But who am I? Who am I? I'm not on the booking team, so I don't have anything to say. Nia Jax turned on Alexa Bliss. That was cool, but I would have preferred if it was Sasha and Nia attacked first, and then she would have turned on Alexa Bliss. But whatever. We'll see where that goes when the time comes. As time rolls on, I guess. We'll see where that goes. And as for SmackDown, SmackDown was weird this week. I, I like the fact that the Fashion Police is back. That was great. I also like that the Usos and the New Day are still going to be feuding. We don't know what the uh, stipulation is between the Usos and the New Day, despite the Usos winning. guess we'll find out next week. Um, let's see. What, what else did we have? Tamina is, is trying to be Rusev. And Lana is managing Tamina. It's not working for me. Tamina needs new music. She needs a new everything. Tamina can be a dominating heel. Did I say that right? A dominating heel, but... She needs a new everything. The character has to change. The music has to change. Her demeanor has to change. Just her coming out to talk me. No. And Lana's doing everything as her mouthpiece doesn't doesn't work for me. Uh, Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable destroyed the Ascension. Shelton hasn't aged a bit. And he still got it. He still got it. So cool, cool, cool. Definitely brownie points there. Bobby Roode uh, beat Mike Kanellis. That made me upset because... Why is Mike Canellas being a squash wrestler, enhancement talent? Why? Why? It shouldn't have been like that. Then you had Nakamura, Orton, Mahal, and Rusev in a tag team match at the main event. I didn't care about that match. I'm sorry. It was just awkward, sloppy, pretty bad, to be honest. Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura is going to be having a match next week, by the way. So if you didn't see it coming, Randy RKO'd Shinsuke at the end of the show, and that was that. If I had to pick a winner between the two, really, I wouldn't pick either one because both shows weren't that great. You had an awesome moment, awesome segment on Raw, and then you had SmackDown, which was just kind of a weird put-together show. You had this great comeback moment from uh, Shelton, the KO, Shane Deal, AJ, and Corbin. That's cool and all, but it just felt weird. If you go, By the way, AJ, if you're going to do the, the U.S. Open Challenge, man, it can't be... No 10-second matches, man. No, Cena wasn't doing any of that. Cena was at least putting on 20, 15-minute matches with some of these new talents. But maybe because Corbin's being a dick, we're going to have to deal with that for a while. But I noticed I say but a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Had another thought. Butts, butts, butts. Anyway, anyway, I, I'm going with a draw. I, I still can't pick a winner. Despite that great moment, can you think of anything else on Raw that was pretty good? Nah, for me, no. And SmackDown just didn't feel like a good SmackDown episode. I, maybe it's because of the crowd and the writing. I, I don't know, but I I wasn't feeling either one of the shows. But I did enjoy the moments that both of the shows produced. Not saying they were terrible, but neither one of them outshined each other, you know. So that that's it for Brand Warfare Light, I guess. I hope this isn't like a long-term installment because if it is... Eh, we'll make Grand Warfare light. Instead of being so in-depth, we'll just hit the main points and call it a day. But that's it. I'm MCZX Prince. Smart Kingdom. Like, share, subscribe, smash the subscription button. Share with your friends. Do all that good stuff. Make us happy. Subscribe. Let's get to at least, I don't know, 20 subscribers or 27 subscribers. I don't know, guys. We're going to figure out what we're doing with the channel. May Young Classic video is coming soon. That G1 video that I owe you is coming soon. Trust me. I need to get some video editing software so I can do it the way I want to. I don't want to just do an audio uh, recording of what I think is the top 10 moments of the G1. But everything is coming soon. It's not going to be like Emelina coming soon where it takes me 32 weeks to put out a video. No, it's not going to be like that. I promise I'm working to get this straight. But that's all I have to say besides but. Keep saying butts all the time. But, 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 but. All right, guys. Peace out. Be safe out there. And say a prayer and keep the people in Houston in your thoughts for Hurricane Harvey. Hope you guys make it out of there. All right. Later.